Hi, I'm Diane Rogers, Sid and Diane's, and I want to show you what seems silly, but let's make some really easy, good tomato bisque. It's easy to go buy it in a can, but it's so easy to make if you've got some good tomatoes and if you have a little bit of time and it really doesn't take that much. So what I'm going to do is start with a lot of chopped onions into the pot that I am putting about a tablespoon of butter into and I'm putting about another tablespoon of olive oil and the reason for that is the olive oil takes the heat and the butter doesn't but the butter will help the onions caramelize. So I have like about two large chopped onions. We're going to put it on medium high-ish heat. I don't want it, I'll start them off a little fast, but then I'm going to turn it down so they slowly caramelize so the sugar comes out of them. And I am going to add some fresh sliced garlic. I might say the reason I'm slicing it is because I'm going to puree this. So it really won't make a lot of difference whether it's sliced, minced, diced, whatever. And the onions I just coarse chopped because that again isn't that all important because like I say, that's going to be pureed. So we're going to start to brown these. Now to help this, I'm going to add just about a tablespoon of some sugar. That's going to help the caramelization process and depending on the tomatoes you're using will also help balance what usually is citric acid that's added to the tomatoes. So this is going to take a good at least 20 minutes to brown nicely and caramelize, but that's not burnt, that's just slowly browning them. So we'll let those go for a little bit, then we'll come back and we'll add the rest, but that's how you start it. How's that for easy? Well, as you can see, the onions picked up a really nice, deep, golden color. They're caramelized beautifully, and they've picked up quite a bit of flavor. So, what we're going to do now is to that, and these are my little secret spices that make it a little bit different than canned soup. I'm going to put in about three quarters of a teaspoon or so of some dried marjoram. I just love the sweet, sweet marjoram. It's not like oregano where it's real strong to turn this in tomato sauce because we're not making tomato sauce. It's just a really nice herb. If you haven't used some before, get a little bit and try it. Then we're going to put in a little bit of some sweet basil leaf. And I'm going to also put in just a pinch, just a splash of some curry powder. Not much. About an eighth of a teaspoon. And what we're going to do is just stir that into the onions a little bit. Then I'm going to add tomatoes. I'm adding two quarts of tomatoes. These I had packed last summer and they have some, I packed them with fresh basil and some garlic and I also canned some yellow tomatoes. They're wonderful. I'm going to turn this back up to high heat, put the tomatoes in and then stir it up so that the onions get mixed in really well with the tomatoes and because the tomatoes had a bit of juice in them I am also going to add a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste and we'll stir that in really well and then we're going to add just a pinch of salt not much we'll taste that at the end and adjust it and stock, base, whatever. It's nice to add a little bit of the flavor. So there's two ways you can do this. You can add just a little bit of chicken stock to this, which is a wonderful flavor, but if you want to keep it completely vegetarian, which is equally as good, makes no difference, is add a little bit of vegetable stock. All right, so the deal on the stock. This is the easiest way to do it. 
They sell in the stores now, especially food stores, um, vegetable base, better than bouillon, whatever. So add like about, oh, a healthy, healthy teaspoon to this amount, and you can always taste adjust it. And then stir that in really well. And we are going to let this go until the flavors mellow and all the herbs rehydrate. So this is going to go about another 20 minutes. All right, so now it's time to puree this to make it the bisque part of the tomato. So there's two ways you can do this. The easiest that I like to do, sort of, is the immersion blender. This is a wonderful piece. You just put this immersion blender down in the pot, let it go for a couple minutes, and it purees. The other way you can do this is with a blender. The blender, not the processor, but a blender. It gets anything unbelievably smooth because of the smaller bowl at the bottom and the blade, it's more beats per minute per second, however way you want to look at it. And that will get it really, really nice and smooth if, for instance, you don't cook your onions all the way. But this will do a really nice job, especially if you have one that's on the newer side. So we'll puree this a little bit. It doesn't really take that long. And this is going to be some really good bisque. Okay, let's taste it, see where it is. Mmm, excellent. But, you know what? It could use a little bit of thinning, thinning because the cream tend to thicken it a little bit, as well as the whole tomatoes and a little bit of tomato paste. So that is now absolutely wonderful, wonderful tomato bisque. Let's pour a little bit in the bowl. Oh, doesn't this look wonderful? Silky, smooth. That is some nice looking tomato bisque. And what's better <coughs> is, let's taste it just to make sure. Mm. Excellent. You no, know, I probably won't thin it. But to make it a little eye appealing, Fresh basil on the top of that. Fresh Julian basil would be nice, but I had some uh, fresh chopped parsley, and that's really good. Also, since I'm a pepper freak, I do like a little bit of fresh cracked pepper on it. And two thumbs up. Unbelievably good. Unbelievably good. So, I hope you can try that. As you can see, start to finish is about 45 minutes and most of it is hands off cooking because it just takes a while to um, get the uh, onions nice and caramelized. Then dump the tomatoes in the herbs, let it cook and puree it. Well, what is the most natural accompaniment to a tomato bisque than a grilled cheese sandwich? Let me show you how to make a grilled cheese sandwich, as stupid as it sounds, out of a small loaf of good French bread the secret is how you cut this. These loaves are really nice. I kind of like them for one person, two people. One person you've got some for like a day or so that makes great toast or croutons. And then for two people, it makes two really nice sandwiches plus a little bit of toast. But it, the secret is in the cut. So here's how you do it. You want to, to make a nice broad piece, cut this on a 45 degree angle. So what you do, I used to teach this all the time in a restaurant because we used to buy loaves, two pound loaves that were long and narrow. You lightly score it on the top, not don't cut through, just so you get an eyeball. And then you go that way and then go right through the middle. And that will give you a nice long cut out of the bread. So, to make the grilled cheese, I'm going to take one cut from that side. If I were doing two, I'd do two pieces. And the other from the other side 
to store this, since I'm not going to be, I'm only making one sandwich, I'm going to put this cut side down on the cutting board and that will keep for a day or so as long as you have it cut side down that will keep really well for a day or so but on a wooden cutting board so now as you can see as opposed to something that would be that big around right now you have something that's about two and a half times the size and what I'm going to do is to make a really good grilled cheese butter the outside of the bread and then I am going to put this into a nice pan or use a panini press um, whatever but if you don't have a panini press not necessary all you have to do is have a decent heavyweight pan so it doesn't burn because you want to cook this slow or slower so that the cheese melts nicely and then I have a blend of cheddar Gruyere and Monterey Jack it's a great combination now you could put pesto on here you could put tomatoes you could put bacon but let's just make the basic grilled cheese and the basic grilled cheese will just give you an idea of what you can do with it so all right that is together now I'm going to take this over the stove and I'm going to slowly melt it on this side then I'll put it together and flip it and I'll be back with a grilled cheese in a moment. Okay, a luscious grilled cheese off the stove. Here's what I did. I took it to the stove, left it open face and I put it on a medium to medium low heat and then I put the lid on it. By putting the lid on it the cheese melts a little bit faster and so it definitely melted and so what I have is a nice crispy lots of cheese grilled cheese and it's really good cheddar so and then this stuff the little crunchies from the pan I'm gonna put on top of the soup I think whenever I do this whoever I'm making it for we usually fight off of the little pan crunchies and then what we're going to do is cut this in half. I always like to cut sandwiches on a serious diagonal. And oh my gosh, is this looking good or what? A nice grilled triple cheese cheese with some tomato bisque. And I think that's some pretty good eating on a nice cold day, on a nice rainy day in the summer, anytime. So anyway, let's take a little taste. Mm. Long. With the cheddar crispies on top, yum. How did our cheese come out? Mm. Yeah.